In this video, I'm going to be importing the digital asset into Unreal. I'll then introduce running top nets inside of Unreal using Houdini Engine, cooking a first version of the cliffs at a low subdivision level and importing them into Unreal. Now that I'm in Unreal, the first thing I'm going to do is import that digital asset. And I can do that by right clicking in the contents browser, clicking import, navigating to our directory with all our digital assets, and importing the PDG cliff generator. And now let's add our digital asset to the scene. So we can just drag and drop it from the content browser into our viewport. If Houdini engine doesn't start automatically, you can come up to the Houdini engine menu and click create session. And now a Houdini engine session has started and we're connected. We've got our Houdini engine controls here. Let's just collapse this. And here we've got some controls for our top network. So under top network, here it lists our top net node. Currently it's called top net one. We'll actually change that so that's something more recognizable. And let's continue to scroll down. And here we've got a drop down for our top nodes. Currently it's filtered out all of our top nodes apart from the one that we named HE underscore out, which was our output node. If we just scroll up a little bit. You can see here we've got some options here for a top node filter and an output filter. If I uncheck the top node filter and come back down to this drop down, we can see it now lists all of our different top nodes. So we can select one of these nodes and cook this particular node or dirty its work items. Or on the top network, we can dirty all of the nodes and all of their work items and just cook the um, final output. Any node that is prefixed with this HE underscore will appear in this list. And because we've only got our output prefixed, this is the only one that gets listed when this is checked. When a node is prefixed with HE underscore out, it will automatically be selected by default, which is what's happened here. It has selected by default our output node. Let's scroll down a bit further and we can see the parameters have been exposed on our digital asset. I've also just noticed that our working directory is currently set to $hip and I want to change this. I want to output our files to our source content folder in our project. Rather than change that here, I'm going to change it in Houdini so that becomes our default. So let's come back to Houdini. Let's give us some more space and just come inside our PDG digital asset. Is that top net node? Let's rename that. Call this top cliff generator. Now open our type properties and set this working directory. So let's set this working path to the source content folder in our project. So I'm going to type dollar Pegasus demo project. And that's taking me to the path that I set in the Houdini package. And the source content folder mirrors the contents folder inside our Unreal project. And any files that get ported into Unreal, we're storing in a directory that mirrors our contents folder inside Unreal. So if I come into Pegasus, Landscape, Cliffs, and click Accept. I'm going to build all of our files into this directory. So setting up a package allows us to create a path variable that is common between Houdini and Unreal. That way I can cook a digital asset in Houdini or Unreal and they both cook and load to the same directory. Let's come to that parameter in our type properties window, which is under cook controls, work directory, right click and copy defaults from node and hit apply. There we go, now we can see that's the default value. I'm gonna right click, save node type. Save that change to disk and come back to our digital asset up to the Houdini engine parameters and click rebuild to re import and rebuild our digital asset. And let's have a look. Our top network is now updated its name, so we can see it's called Cliff Generator. And if we scroll down a bit further, our working directory has been updated to our source content folder. Now I'm ready to test baking this digital asset. 
to speed things up, I'm going to reduce these subdivisions to zero and then also increase our threshold from 1000 to 10,000. Let's come back up to our top network controls. Before I hit cook, I want to talk about a few other, the other controls we've got here. So we've got two checkboxes here. One says auto load work item output files. And the second one is work item output files visible. So these are unchecked by default. If I was to click cook node now, it will cook the outputs, save the results to disk, but it won't load them into the Unreal scene. We'll have to click this button here that says load work item objects, and then it will load the results into Unreal. If I was to check this on auto load work item output files, then when I cook, it will automatically import the results into Unreal. But the objects would be in the outliner, but those would be invisible. But I can check this work item output files visible. And that way, the work items will be automatically loaded into the scene and they'll be set to visible. If I was to hit cook now, it would cook the results, load the work items into the, my Unreal scene, and it would save the results into this temp directory in the Houdini engine folder. I would then hit bake to bake the results. But because I'm dealing with hundreds of files, I don't want to have to do that process twice. I don't want to have to cook the results load them into Unreal in the temp directory, only to then hit bake and have them baked to the bake folder and then have the final results loaded again into Unreal. That would slow down this process quite a lot. Instead, I'm gonna check auto bake. And this way, it will skip the saving it to the temp location and instead go straight to the baked final results, which is what I want. And now that auto bake is checked, you can see here this button has changed to cook output and bake. So with that, I'm ready to do a test bake here inside of Unreal. Let's click cook output and bake. Now I've done that, we've got some information about the status of the work items. One work item has been cooked and we've got one in progress. Let's switch back to Unreal and take a look at our top network. If you remember, our first two digital assets only had one work item each, and it was our geometry import then split it into multiple work items, one work item per cliff. And now that our PDG, our top network, has got through the first two nodes, it's now split it up into multiple work items, and we can see those additional work items here currently waiting to be cooked. Houdini Engine is currently cooking three work items at once, and it's currently finished cooking 43 work items. And we're starting to see now that some of those cliff sections have finished cooking and have been outputted to BGO files. And Houdini will start to load in those files as it's cooking. Let's take a look inside our source content folder where our geometry is being cooked to. And we can see we've got these subfolders here now that have been baked by our digital asset in Unreal. And here you can see those subfolders that have been generated by the Houdini engine as it bakes our digital asset. Let's just come inside this cliff tile split. You can see we've got our first tiles being baked. Currently it's got up to tile 56. This process is going to take a while. There's kind of no two ways about it. If you're doing this on a single workstation, we'll just have to be patient and allow this to, to cook and bake out the results. Load the geometry into Unreal as, it, as it's outputted. The actual import process, because we're baking um, Nanite meshes, will take a while. I find that the time that it takes to import the Nanite meshes into Unreal is a significant amount of the total work time that it takes to run the digital asset. We'll probably be okay with running our current setup because I've turned down the subdivisions and the total number of cliffs that I'm currently baking. 
and I often keep an eye on my task manager to monitor the CPU and memory usage. Currently, there's quite a lot of different processes that are competing for computer resources. We have our top network, which is utilizing the CPU to run work items. And those top nets are doing things like subdividing geometry and displacing it. And all of these things take up memory. But also on top of that, Unreal is utilizing our resources to import the geometry. And that also takes CPU and memory. So it's important to recognize that if our top network starts using a lot of memory and possibly maxes out our memory, that would quite likely cause Unreal to crash. So this is when I was referring to the need to manage our resources and be conscious of what processes are using our CPU and memory. So I'm going to continue to record whilst this process is running and then come back to it once it's complete. I'm going to be cooking and recooking top networks inside of Unreal several times throughout this video series. In some cases, the total cooking time was up to two hours. But my aim is to show the process in its entirety as much as possible. So I'll continue to record as the top nets cook and then fast forward through those sections. Now that process is complete, it took about 20 minutes. We have still got some um, some things processing now that geometry is imported, but we now have those cliffs inside of Unreal. I'm going to make one more change to our digital asset, and that's to add some padding to the numbers on our cliffs here. So let's come back to Houdini and back to our HDA geometry node and to our digital assets and down to our cliff split and select our first attribute wrangle and open our geometry spreadsheet. So I want to pad this number with some extra zeros just to make them more readable when they're inside of real. And I'm going to use an expression called sprintf, which stands for string print. So it's actually going to convert this class attribute to a string. So I don't need this expression that we're using. Let's swap it for sprintf, open brackets, followed by a single quotation mark, and type percent 04d, and then close, single quotation mark, comma, and then add the closing bracket after the class attribute, and click anywhere in the network, and that will update. Now you can see we've got this number padded by a zero. And here where it says 04D, we're specifying that we want it to be four digits long. And we're going to do the same in this second attribute wrangle here, where we're setting the Unreal name attribute. Replace this expression with S print F, open brackets, quotation mark, percentage zero, 4D. And then close that quotation mark, comma. And then we've got the closing bracket after the class attribute again. Click anywhere in the network and see if that's updated. I've misspelled this. I put an uppercase D instead of a lowercase D. Let's change that. There we go. That's now working correctly. We've got it padded with four zeros. Right click here, save node type, and come back to Unreal. So I'm going to delete these cliffs because I want to rebake them. So let's delete those, as well as coming to our content browser and deleting all of these as well. And let's also come to Explorer, and I'm also going to delete these two folders because I just need to regenerate the cliff tile and everything that come after it, because those are the only ones I've made changes to. So let's delete those. And and on our digital asset, let's scroll down and let's click Cook Output and Bake again. Houdini Engine doesn't need to cook the previous steps, it just needs to cook the last two steps. So hopefully this should be quicker than the first time we baked it. So now that's baked, let's have a look at the results. So now we've got those numbers padded and things are a bit more organised. Look at the contents browser, and we can see we've got that number padding on our static meshes.
we're currently only doing the largest sections on our island. And we've got a lot of smaller cliffs that don't have any geometry baked for them. So the next step will be to decrease this delete small cliffs threshold so we bake more geometry, as well as increasing this subdivision so we get more detail on our cliffs. I could continue to run this top net from within Unreal, and if you're going to continue working with a lower subdivision or a lower number of cliffs, this is a perfectly valid approach. But I'm next going to move on to showing you an alternative way of working where we manage the cooking process from within Houdini and build a second digital asset that imports the final results into Unreal. If you want to generate a lot more cliffs and increase the subdivision level, then this alternative workflow is very important and I'll explain why in the next video.